Team. We had Eastern Gate House Prayer on Friday night, and uh, yesterday we were part of a worship and prophetic conference called Be Light in Ankeny, and it was uh, it was a pretty amazing experience. Um, there were two words that really stuck out to me yesterday. Um, Jamie Galloway was the prophetic minister that kind of his ministry put on the event, and uh, Rick Pino was there to do worship and to talk a little bit about worship and what they're doing down in Austin, Texas. And um, Tracy Fox was another prophetic voice that was there speaking to business individuals specifically and then some general stuff in the conference. But um, the two words, when Jamie said when he was praying about a word for Des Moines and a, word, a specific word for this conference, he said the Lord gave him one, literally one word. Sometimes you get a word, you know, to give to the people and sometimes you get a word. And the word was bravery. And um, I know that our Miss Sarah resonates strongly with that word. <laughs> we, uh, we got our books out and our color crayons and our markers and we're, we're having a time. Um, but bravery, uh, bravery to do whatever the Lord says, bravery to speak whatever he says, mm -hmm. bravery to go wherever he says, bravery to be who he says we are. Yes. I wrote down a list of long things. Uh, bravery to worship freely, mm -hmm. bravery to speak life into a stranger's life. And um, the other word that came late in the evening, very late last night, um, was the word accelerate. And that word, I think, resonated the most strongly with me because I believe we're in a season of acceleration. And the Lord is ready. Um, and there were a lot of um, conversations about the promises that God has made to all of us that we haven't seen come to pass yet, whether they're two, two days ago, two years ago, or 20 years ago. God made promises, and does God ever lie? God does not lie. God cannot lie. And so those promises are now words. And in this season um, of acceleration, he's going to bring all of us into maturity. I think that's where we are as a body. I think that's where the word is that's coming from this pulpit right here is to mature and to accelerate into being the sons and daughters of God that we were created to be and to function as we were created to be in this earth. And so be ready. Be prepared to take that step forward, be brave, because sometimes that step forward is off of a cliff into the unknown, but be brave. Yes. That's what Josh, that's my, one of my favorite verses is from Joshua, be bold and very courageous. Yeah. Be yeah. bold and be very courageous. Yes. Cour courage doesn't mean that you're not afraid. Courage means you do it anyway, because you trust, you trust the, where the word came from. Amen. And we need to put all of our trust in the Lord and just go for it. Um, one of the most amazing things Tracy said is that the Holy Spirit in the very beginning of his journey, which was a wild ride, a wild ride to be um, you know, brief, um, he said that the Lord told him every day with him would be an adventure. And he said that every day he gets up and he reminds the Lord, Lord, let's go on an adventure today. And I think that sometimes we just get stuck in our routines and our ruts, but I'm ready for a great adventure. And I'm willing to say yes. And I'm willing to be brave. And I said that out loud. So you all can hold me to it. <laughs> Let's be brave. Let's go on an adventure. That's the joy that comes from knowing the Lord. That is the, the, the savor, right? The flavor, the savor of being a Christian and walking this out day to day. Yes. The joy and the peace and the love that as we pour it out, he just continues to pour it into us. So let's be bold and very courageous in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so we'll open uh, with, uh, if anybody has anything they want to share, any prayer requests or testimonies. Yeah, Roberto. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I'll try to be brief. Just uh, a couple of things. Friday night, uh, it was very intense, i got to say. Uh, I was actually debating whether I was coming or not. And then I said, okay, I'm going to go. And then we found out that you couldn't make it, so I to make it and all that. And then the first
first thing that Mike said to me as I walked in the door was, you heard the calling, so uh, I believe I did. <clears throat> and usually when, when there's people from the worship team uh, missing, uh, one of the first things that comes to my mind is, oh man, how are we going to do these songs now with this part? Being there, you know, I started getting worried about that, which is just superfluous, but anyway. Uh, on Friday, I wasn't worried, and, uh, you know, after I tuned the guitar and all that, I just started playing chord progression, and, and one thing that I have noticed is that uh, <clears throat> it seems to me that the E minor D chord progression, it's, it's, it's the one that gets the, the <coughs> soldiers going, the march, that's like the, the battle cry pretty much. And I, I, I don't even, I, I probably can't replicate what I was doing uh, on Friday evening, but we started going and then James jumped in and then Mike jumped in and we kept going and we went into spontaneous worship and we were probably like 40 minutes in and we were still in the same war cry and just uh, pushing and declaring things and, and all that and, and I gotta say, uh, Probably this this last house of prayer we had was one of the ones in which I felt, you know, uh, the spiritual power that we put out when we when we do this. So it was it was very good. I'm I'm very thankful uh, to the Lord for that. Uh, the other thing is, uh, I'm, I'm going to ask prayer specifically for my brother, but also. Uh, that we continue to pray for uh, a change in man's heart. For a while, I get out of social media, mostly Facebook, because it's pretty much turning into a cancer to to the spirit. Uh, people are so nasty and, and rude, and some of the stuff that people put in there, you wonder uh, how the... <coughs> How does such a heart exist? But anyway, I don't know if you remember, it was probably last week that I said that my brother is in this uh, Facebook battle with one of my cousins. Well, he now went into military mode and he's been just posting the nasty stuff. And, uh, I just pray that <clears throat> he lets go of the situation because he's holding on to a worldly thing rather than a spiritual thing. And I think he. <coughs> Um, well, I don't think he is. I know he is using scripture to justify what he's doing. Um, and I don't agree with that. And I have told him, you need to let this go, man. This is not going to get you anywhere. Just forget it. It's, it's not worth it. But he's a very stubborn individual. And he refuses to let it go. Um, so I just <clears throat> pray that he just forgets about that. and continues to, to live his life the way he has been and, and focus on what's important because <clears throat> unfortunately uh, most of society likes to put their trust in men and we are the most flawed creature God has ever made because we have the capacity <coughs> of thinking and, and rationalizing and all that and, and because of that <clears throat> Our ego gets in the way, and we think that we know best and, and all that. When the focus should be the Lord. It, I heard a, a pastor say one time, he said, I love my wife, and I trust her, but I do not put my trust in her. I put it in God. Because uh, at one point or another, we're going to be disappointed by someone. But if you're truly mature spiritually, you're not going to let that take your life down. And that's, that's when you know that you are fully grown, like it says in, in the scripture. So just continue to pray for change in, in man's heart and, uh, and for my brother to just let go of that and, and, and I don't know if it's bitter, but to let go of that bitterness as well and just focus on his family and his business. I mean, his business is doing extremely well. I'm very happy for him and proud 
because he's a, a hard worker. And he only does it for his family, because he wants to provide for them and say, they're, this is the only reason why they're not. He enjoys it, but, so he let, let's go with that. So if you can join me in prayer, I appreciate it. <coughs>
through it, I really feel like I would have had a totally different outcome. But unfortunately, all I could see was me. All I could see was my hurt. All I could see was my pain. And I lashed out and I wasn't a very nice person. Um, however, God kind of dealt with me on that this morning. We had a little talk. So um, anyway, I just want to encourage everyone to worship. Just worship. Just yes. worship. Just yep. worship. And I, I just, I just know that when we, even if you're just going to sing your troubles to him, you know, you cared enough to take it to him first. Mm -hmm. He was number one on the list. He's the one you took your problems to. Because yes, he, he is the one that we have our trust in, our full trust, a hundred percent trust. Can't, can't get any more trustworthy than that. I mean, to a man that, you know, to a, to a God that never changes ever, never will change ever. I mean, what could be better than that? So I just want to encourage people to, to, to worship. Worship in the trials. Worship when everything is going great. Just worship. I really feel like this is a key, that this is going to really help us unlock this fear and open this floodgate of joy and peace. And my goodness, who doesn't want a flood of joy and peace? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, uh, I believe the scripture that Rick was talking about was it Psalm 22, I believe. Psalm 22, verse 3 maybe. God is enthroned yes. in the praises of his people. Yes. And when God is on the throne, they're not praying for healings in heaven. Right. They're not mourning over the dead in heaven. Right. They, what are they doing in heaven? In Revelation chapter 4, they're worshiping. Yeah. And when we worship and we enthrone him in our praise, yes. we don't worship from heaven to earth. Or from earth to heaven. We are seated in heavenly places. When we worship, we worship from heaven to earth. Yes. And that is how we bring heaven to earth. Is through yes. enthroning him in the praise of his people. Yes. Yes. Amen. yes. That's right. Amen. Yes. Amen. Anyone else this morning? James, I saw you had you. Yeah, that, um, who was that? Mike, Jesus, we love you. We love you. That kind of hit my hip. Go ahead and nail on the head. That's a very deep worship thing. And I can listen to that for hours and uh so you know that's characteristics of uh spiritual worship and having revelation to what you can hear God that's a very deep um, conversation with him so like you know real value in the body I think that kind of what spiritual direction of where to get back in the world It's Philippians 3 um, that God gives us supernatural strength. His supernatural strength. I think it's in Philippians 3. 2 or 3. I can't remember that. But yeah. Pray for 
for John this morning. Anyone else? Any prayer requests? Any testimonies? Anything you guys want to share? Anybody? Just one more. Sure. Uh, for Kelly's dad, actually, I forgot about this. Um, he went to the hospital on Friday. So he was having some chest pains. Um, and apparently he needs to have a hard cat. But we don't know for sure. I don't know more yesterday because when he got home in the afternoon on Friday, the doctor's office was closed, so he needs to call tomorrow and see what's going on. So just pray for complete healing that whatever is it's there, uh, it's gone. When, uh, wherever they, they're going to do the procedure, so nothing has to be done. Uh, To pray for all those that are uh, on spring break, uh, thinking of the white cops and other people that are out of state uh, taking this week off. And just pray for traveling mercies and for <coughs> God's agenda to come forth. I know Jody mentions a few times about some situations down there where she, she's at. Uh, just lift them up, pray for wisdom and the situations they face as they uh, go forth with the kingdom grace message to family members and stuff. So just watch over and pray that all those that are here today. Yeah. 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 All right, let's stand and go to the Lord this morning. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
for the glory of your kingdom, for the glory of your name, the name above all names, Jesus. Jesus, let our lives be a love song of praise to you, Lord. For you are worthy. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our trust, Lord. That you are never fail us. You are faithful to the end, Lord. And right now I ask you to stir up those promises that have been buried deep. Those promises that you have planted in the hearts of your people. Bring back the dreams and the visions, Lord. The hope that those promises brought, Lord. And bring it to pass in this season of acceleration. Bring those things to pass right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I don't consider myself a very patient person. And I know patience is a fruit of the Spirit, but I just want to, I just feel like God says now. He's not in it tomorrow and He's not in it yesterday. He's right now. He is the I am. And we have got to be in the I am. We have to be I am right now. Okay. Just a reminder this morning if you brought a cell phone, please silence it till after the service. And we are still looking for someone to help with the soundboard. And in the booth. I'm the booth. Uh, as you see, there's nobody up there right now. Uh, well, probably see if there's nobody else there. <laughs> Sheila's uh, doing double duty. She's got a granddaughter with her. Uh, Roberto's going to help out. We're, Michael's gone today. So there's nobody in the sound booth right now. Uh, Roberto's going to try to take care of all three things at the same time. Uh, if you hit the floor, some balls dropping. <laughs> <laughs> so that means this body needs to step up a little bit, okay? Because of need. Um, a lot of ministry is because of the need. So just pray about it. Um, we will train. Uh, that board is not that hard. In fact, that's a pretty simple board to work with. Um, you don't have to worry about those little white knobs at the bottom of them and down, and that's it. We'll take care of the rest. Anyway, uh, camera, person, uh, song on the ground for scriptures. Right now, Tammy's going to be doing the remote for the songs and for the announcements and stuff. So, there's a need, okay? Um, several things. Uh, nursery workers, we have no way to work with the little children. We need to pray for that. We need to believe the, there will be provision there too. So she will do her ministry up here. Uh, right now, she cannot because she has responsibilities. So let's pray about that. Uh, also for the children and the youth. Uh, I've been praying for people coming and step in once in a while to help out even with our teens. Um, I know that's coming. I know Sarah wants to speak uh, once she gets a chance. And now that the uh, fear is gone. Um, we'll take care of that situation. So <laughs> don't back off. Remember, Roberto's uh, get, uh, getting his house built in, in August. Uh, what would happen in August if uh, Sheila was in this situation? Um, there would be nobody up there at all. Okay? So let's prepare. Let's pray. Let's get ready. Uh, there's uh, awesome things coming. Uh, we're going to prepare the way. The Lord is getting ready to move, and we need to be established in the things that the Lord wants to get done. And these technical things need to be handled. I know there's people, I've seen anointed uh, sound tech people, I've seen anointed cameramen, I've seen an anointed media people. Um, after the times where well, I've seen the Holy Ghost, and yes, they feel on the floor back there because the Holy Ghost moved through the room, but that's another situation. Let's prepare, please. Let's prepare and pray. Amen. All right, let's take an offering this morning. Um, Roberto, do you want to come take an offering this morning? Sorry, Vanessa, these worship team members. <laughs> Who's just standing there looking ready and available?
next Saturday afternoon, uh, Eastern Gate House of Birds will be invited to uh, do a time slot at the prayer burn up in Ankeny again. Uh, we normally do a five to seven uh, situation. Um, I'm praying that we can move it to four to six because it turns out that one of the youth that I work with in a worship team situation, uh, getting youth group uh, worship team on the west side, getting situated, one of those young ladies is uh, going to be helping in worship at a brand new church we're starting over there in, on Milwaukee, and she invited me to come. And I just want to, sometimes I just want to see the fruits of the labor. Okay, it's it's an awesome thing to see these young ones. Um, I know to uh, Katrina, who was also here playing keyboard on Wednesday night a few years back. Uh, her, now that she's married, she's leading worship uh, and working with the youth group out in Indiana. So the fruit's growing there. And going through the conference yesterday, I was stopped by another young lady who uh, was also in another uh, youth group that I had going on. Um, the second worship team, we had two worship teams for the youth. And, uh, old page, she comes up to me, she's married, and she has a little baby now, and she was going to Iowa State University. Well, while they were up at Iowa State, they were part of the salt ministry up there, working with uh, gospel music and, and preaching Jesus up there, and uh, she's now part of the Chi Alpha uh, ministry up there, and her and her husband are leading worship. So I think it's a neat thing, I got three young ones, you know, just they were not much older than Kennedy, that are now, they're grown up, they've gone to college, they've gone with what the Lord has made and helped them through, and that they're leading worship in other places around this area and in Indiana. So I thank God for uh, the multiplicity of His Spirit and uh, what He's doing here now. Look at this. Look at, keep going, keep going, keep going. You see, this is, look like a, a, you need your choir robes? Or we're all smiling together. <laughs> <laughs> we're just insane. Like, we're just insane. I didn't even look at anybody. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, don't despise small beginning church. I can't stop. We're going to speak about come Holy Spirit. I mean, I'm going to make a statement right now. We know the Holy Spirit's here right now. We know the Holy Spirit is within us right now because we believe in Jesus. And He is within us. When we sing this song, it's not that, you know, He's not in this place, He's not within us. We just want more, okay? We just want more. Well, I mean, we want more. No, I don't want Him to send out more from the throne room because He's already sent the Holy Spirit. I want Him to come out of you, okay? Poured into many of you have been poured into for years, some for only less than a year. Okay, so start pouring out, church. What do you pour out? You're gonna pour out on your brothers and sisters in this place. Who needs a touch from the Lord this morning?
He says, ask of me. He says, ask of me. Lord, we are asking. We have asked. Thank you, Lord, that you are faithful and true. That you are in this room right now. We know, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that I see your spirit releasing out of those in this room. Releasing out of this room right now. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, release, 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 release. Step out, there are people. 
Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy that is revealed to us every moment of every day. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Jesus. You are a good God. Hallelujah. The only true and living God. Everything about you is good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your goodness. Praise God. It was said already, but perfect love casts out fear. God is love. He's perfect love. And in Him there is no fear. If we can maintain our focus, our awareness of our identity in Him, fear can have no part in our lives. Hallelujah, Jesus. Fear not, for I am with thee. I'll never leave you or forsake you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I uphold you with my righteous right hand. I am not far from you. I am with you. I will never leave you. And I will never forsake you. I am always with you. Thank you, Jesus. Always with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For it is not your death, but the death of my son. We walk through life in the shadow of that death. And because of that, we fear no evil. And because of that, Thou art with us. Hallelujah. You spread a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Hallelujah. Thank You, Jesus. Providing every need. And all the enemy can do is watch. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. God bless you all. You may be seated. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, everybody, for sharing this morning. Praise God. Especially Holy Spirit. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. share a little word of wisdom this morning. Space heaters are the perfect gift for a house warming. <laughs> invited, just write that down. Praise the Lord. 
get your opportunity to give a good gift. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Who's doing what back there? Oh, good. We'll get my good side, will you? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless. I'm not an egotist, but nobody's perfect. And I am nobody. Just run that through your head there for a minute. Praise the Lord. God is good, isn't He? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And, you know, we, we sometimes we get so worried about in the Spirit, out of the Spirit, and are we flowing or are we resisting or are we... Listen, if you're in God, if you're born again, the Spirit is moving all the time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We, we'd have to be pretty egotistical to think that we could stop God from moving. Praise the Lord. So, don't worry about it. He's got control. Praise the Lord. All we have to do is let go. Amen. And let God, right? I heard somebody uh, asked this question the other day. said, uh, are you a Christian? And they said, well, I try to be. And the truth is, either you are a Christian or you aren't a Christian. If you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you are a Christian. Your works don't save you. His work has saved you if you believe. Praise the Lord. And uh, I know sometimes we talk about, you know, confessing the word. And uh, I, I think people sometimes get the idea that it's some kind of a gimmick to get what you want. And that's not the case. We confess the word because it changes the way we think. We confess the word because it's how we renew our mind so that we think the way God thinks. So that we operate the way God operates. Yes, we need to confess the word. Because it's the truth about any situation that we find ourselves in. But it's not the thing that, it isn't like it makes God then do something for us. It's the reality of what we're already facing. We're not looking at things as they are, amen, but as they are not. We speak to things that are not as though they were. That's the way God does it. So we say what the Word of God says about the situation, no matter what. So I want to talk to you about some things, uh, some of the same things that I mentioned Wednesday night. In fact, I'll do a little bit of recap for Wednesday night. I'm not pre preaching that message over again, but I'm, I am going to try to bring some of those things to the front again, because I think one of the biggest problems we have as Christians is that we, uh, we fight ourselves. Jesus said, I only say what the Father says. I only do what the Father does. Well, the problem is we try to do that, but because our minds are not renewed, we end up focusing on things that we can see, situations, circumstances, and we respond to those not by the Word of God, but by our own carnal way of dealing with things. Praise the Lord. Anybody that's been married for more than six minutes, praise God, knows that there can be conflict in marriages. Amen. And, uh, and everybody's right. Amen. Praise God. I learned something early on in, in marriage to Sally. We've been married almost 40 years. And uh, one of the things I learned was that when I think I've won the argument, the argument just isn't over. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's just on hold. Praise God. So give in quick and be done with it. Praise God. But uh, there's a couple of things I want to uh, We'll just start off with here, and I'll just try to bring you up as we go along, okay? Let's, uh, Roberto, if you will, let's begin with Romans chapter 6 and verse 8. In this world, amen, you're going to have tribulation. In this world, there's going to be conflict. In this life, even though we're born again, even though we are children of God, even though we are spiritually perfect, we are still flesh and blood. And because to the degree that our mind is renewed to the Word of God is the degree to which we will operate in our true identity as Christians, as spirit beings. So... Uh, just, I mean, well, I don't want to get ahead of myself. The truth is, we all struggle with stuff. Amen? doesn't make you a, not a Christian. It just makes you not a very effective Christian. Praise the Lord. Jesus was effective because He was 
in the Spirit all the time. He operated by the Spirit all the time. That's what we are to try to grow up into that reality. Now, we're not condemned if we don't. We don't go to hell because we don't. We just don't experience the totality and the fullness of life. Amen. That we would if we were able to have our minds renewed so that our minds operated in agreement with our spirit. That's why he tells us to renew your mind, okay? Because when you got born again, you are perfect, spiritually speaking. You're not going to get any better. Right. You're already right on. You're righteous. You're, you're the righteousness of God in Christ. But naturally, in the natural, to the degree that your mind isn't in sync with that, you can be just as crazy as anybody. Sure. In fact, you can do stuff as just as weird as it was before you got saved. I can testify to it. I've done it. What time is it? Praise the Lord. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him. Okay? If we're dead with Christ, then we're also alive with Christ. Right? That's a paradox. Now, here's another one. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 8. Thou hast put all things in subjection under His feet. For in that He put all in subjection under Him, He left nothing that is not put under Him. But now we see not yet all things put under Him. That's a paradox. Yes. Mm. Uh -huh. It's not just confusing prose. I mean, it's, it's a contradiction it looks like. Right? Because it says all things in subjection under His feet. We're dead and yet we're alive. Everything's under His feet. Subjected under Him. Nothing that's not put under Him, but we don't see everything put under Him. Yes. Praise God. Yeah. All things are put under His feet, but we don't see all things under His feet. Mm -hmm. Likewise, what we're dealing with is we are dead and our lives are hid with Christ in God. Mm -hmm. But we don't recognize that we're dead exactly. and that all things have been put under His feet. Carnally speaking is what he's talking about. When we died with Christ, when we were crucified with Christ, our carnal man died with him. Our flesh, our, our sinful nature, right? So now we are to be spiritually alive. But we only function in that reality, alive in Christ, to the degree that we recognize that we are dead. And we only see everything subject to Christ and everything under Christ's feet to the degree that we see it that way. Yes. Otherwise, we're begging for something to happen that's already been taken care of. Yeah. We're trying to get a breakthrough, and the breakthrough came 2,000 years ago when he said it's finished. Uh, does that make sense to you? That's what we're talking about here. That's the, that's the kind of the, the paradox that we deal with. Amen. We have to focus on the Word of God. The finished work of the cross. Confessing the Word is not a gimmick to get you what you want. What you want and what you need has already been provided. Confessing the Word just agrees with the truth. Yes. So you can say, well, I don't believe it. Of course, that's why you don't have it. Exactly. <laughs> if you don't see everything under His feet then obviously everything's not under His feet as far as you're concerned. Yeah. If you don't see yourself dead and crucified with Christ, then obviously you're not going to see yourself alive in Christ. Right. It's, you know, it's not that deep as we try to make Christianity to be. It's simple. Right. It's really quite simple if we just look at it as, as it is instead of trying to make stuff out of it. Instead of trying to create doctrines and create denominations, we ought to just look at what the Word of God says, believe it, yes. and then live it. Yeah. Amen. John the Baptist said, he said, he must increase. What's he saying? He's saying the Spirit, Christ, must increase, and I, the flesh, the carnal mind, has to decrease. Praise the Lord. You can agree with it or not agree with it, but the truth is, to the degree that your carnal mind is still operating is the degree to which you're being held back from the spiritual gifts that God has for you. The promises. Amen? We try to decrease. We try to do stuff and hope that that will cause Him to increase. Does it work that way? 
by renewing your mind to the Word of God, your focus is on Him, He increases automatically. And you will decrease automatically. Your carnal mind, your natural man will. So the more you're focused on Him, obviously the more He increases, the more real He is. Alright, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verses 5 and 6. You know, the Scripture says we are spirits and we should function as spirits, spirit to spirit. The Word of God is spirit and it's life. If we don't look at it spiritually, if we just look at it through natural intellect, we'll never understand, we'll never get the benefit of all that's there. You can be saved, but you'll never see the totality of what it is God's trying to do. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to get into a whole bunch of this this morning, but just as a, here's an example. I've talked about it before. There's 66 books in the Bible. We read the first 65, and we see the symbolisms, we see the metaphors, we see the parables, we see all these spiritual truths that are sown into those books. Then we come to the book of Revelation, and immediately it's literal. So it scares the crap out of us because we can't understand any of it. Right. And it's because we're trying to literally look at it rather than spiritually look at it. Exactly. Exactly. So there's some of those things that I'll touch on this morning, not for the sake of that, but just simply to get us to understand that we are spirit beings, and if we're functioning in the, by the spirit, then the flesh cannot dominate us. And so it doesn't do you any good. And I'm not saying... We're detached from reality, but I'm saying reality and facts are two different things. Yes. Jesus Christ is our reality. Yes. Facts are what we have to deal with, and the only way we can deal with them successfully is by using the Word of God, Jesus Christ, in that fact. That will change the fact. The reality will remain the same. The truth is, by His stripes you were healed. The fact may be that you have some kind of disease. Because we live in a world that's fallen. Sure. And our flesh is subject to the world that we live in. To the degree yeah. that it yeah. Yeah. agrees with it. Yes. So the more your mind is renewed to the word of God that by his stripes you were healed, yes. the more likely you're going to walk in healing. Yes. Doesn't mean that your symptoms won't come. It doesn't mean that you won't have things. I mean, it's the same way with finances. It's the same way with everything. The way you got saved is you believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth. What did you confess? You confessed what he said. Exactly. That's salvation. That's how all of it works. There isn't a different thing to do, amen, for every situation and circumstance. It's always the same. Amen. You stay with the Word of God. No matter what. How many of you felt like you weren't saved after you got saved? As recently as maybe half hour ago. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. But you are because the Word says you are because you did what the Word said you should do. And you continue to confess it. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Yes. Right? Because the reality is that's who I am. I am a spirit. I just happen to live in a body. Yes. yes. Alright? So, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 5 and 6. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. The he that's to be revealed is Jesus. And he's to be revealed in us. Individually and collectively. Alright? Look at verse 1. It, it is, sets the context for this. So if you back up to verse 1, it'll show you. We beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him. So that's, the, that's where we're beginning with this. And then he comes to verses uh, 5 and 6 and he says, that to withhold and tell His appearing until the appearing, until Jesus is revealed, until the revealing of Jesus. Amen. All right. Verses 6 and 7 now. Now you know what withholdeth that He might be revealed in His time. Verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Now that's the second half of a mystery. The mystery of iniquity. The first half, 
is Colossians 1, 26 and 27. Where it tells us this mystery of old that God has revealed through the Gentiles, even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay? So that's the first half of the mystery. Christ in you. You are a spirit. Yes. Yes. The hope of glory. The revelation of Christ. Yes. So His glory fills the earth as the waters cover the sea. How does He do it? By us. By people all over the earth. Yes. The flip side of this mystery is the mystery of iniquity already at work. The soul life, uh -huh. the carnal life, the carnal mind, our lack of identifying totally with the Spirit. Yep. What, what's withholding His revealing? Iniquity that's already at work. Yeah. That's disguising or marring the visage or the revelation or the revealing of Christ. Now, there's all these debates, and I'm not going to go through it, but I'll just, I can show you by the Word of God. And everybody says, well, okay, you got born again. You don't have that old nature anymore. Call it whatever you want to, but crap still happens in our lives, and you all know it as well as I do, sure. that is not totally identifiable in the Spirit. It's just, it looks just like what it looked like before you were born again. Sure. Yeah. Praise the Lord. That's iniquity at work. Praise the Lord. Alright, look, let's look at this. Romans 8 and verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Alright. Verse 9. Just drop down to verse 9. But you're not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. So if you're born again, you're not in the flesh. You're in the Spirit. Right? right? Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. So if you aren't born again, this is a whole different conversation. Sure. But I'm speaking to people that are born again here. Yes. So here's what he's saying. Positionally, you are in Christ. Yes. Positionally, re, re, as far as God is concerned, you are Spirit. Therefore, there is no condemnation. Right. right? But you can walk after the flesh. Sure. Yeah. Even though positionally you are in Christ. Right. You still have the capacity to walk, not in the Spirit, but after the flesh. Sure. Sure. Praise God. You're not a sinner because you've been saved by grace. But you can still sin. Are you, are you with me? Praise the Lord. So we're not, we're not schizophrenic. We're just not focused. That's it. All right. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2. See, we, the more we understand, the more likely we are to be that reality. Because what happens is, he says there's no condemnation. But when you walk after the flesh, you know there is condemnation. And it's not coming from God. Right. It's your own soul. It's your own carnal mind that makes you feel ashamed and guilty. Or it's somebody else pointing it out to you. Yep. That's right. And then you feel like, well, I don't deserve to be blessed. I don't deserve to have these promises in my life. That's why you've got to renew your mind to the Word of God and not to the natural way of looking at things. Not to circumstances, not to cause and effect. Exactly. So, beloved, now are we the sons of God? Now are we the sons of God? Yeah. And yet it does not yet appear what we shall be. This is kind of the, that same paradox. All things are under His feet. And yet we don't see all things under His feet. We are the sons of God, but it doesn't look like we're sons of God sometimes, right? But when He appears, we'll be like Him. Of course we will, because if He appears, He's going to appear in you. 
Right? We've already established that. So he will appear and we'll see him as he is. Yes. All right, chapter 4 now, verse 1 through 3. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know you the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. So any spirit that doesn't confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, right? Now we know Jesus came 2,000 years ago, right? And we believe He's coming again. But it doesn't say any spirit that confesses not Jesus Christ has come or Jesus Christ will come, but confesses it says that any spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come. Yeah. Yeah. So what is your spirit confessing? Mm -hmm. Is it Jesus Christ is coming you? Or is it not confessing that? Right. Now this isn't to scare you because you're saved. You're born again. But the spirit of Antichrist can function at the same place, in the same location as the spirit of Christ. The Antichrist isn't necessarily some evil person. It's every one of us. It's a spirit that tries to operate in each and every one of us. That says, he hasn't come yet. Yeah. You're carnal. Wow. You're not born again. Christ hasn't appeared in you. You don't agree with that. You don't identify with that. That's Antichrist. All right, Romans 8, verses 8 through 11. Okay, here's the deal. I've, I'm just tired of doing church. Of just scratching each other's backs and saying whoopee and yeah. praise the Lord. When we all know we got crap going on in our lives that isn't being dealt with. Yes. And so we just want to go somewhere and have somebody wave a wand over us. Or swing the dead cat or the rabbit's foot or something and just make everything good. When we're the ones that have the ability to change it. Yes. And if we're not going to renew our minds to the word of God, we're stuck with whatever it is we've got. And you can make all the excuses you want. It won't matter. The truth is, to the degree you renew your mind to who you are in Christ is the degree to which you will experience a revelation or a manifestation or a revealing of Christ in your life. That means healing. That means deliverance. That means prosperity. That means all of it. Yes, it does. Yes. That's the reason for confessing the Word. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. But you walk after it, you, right? You're not in the flesh. Positionally, you are in Christ. You are in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you, and he does if you're born again. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's not in any of his. And we know that if you're not born again, you're, you're still dead as far as God's concerned. And if Christ be in you... The body is dead. The flesh, the carnality side of you is dead. It was crucified with Christ because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. So the Spirit will dominate your flesh in every area. So when people are telling me that this doesn't, that does, it's, they're telling me that they're in the that they're walking after the flesh, because if you're in the spirit and you're renewing your mind, you're going to agree with what God says, regardless of what the facts are. 
All right, Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. And this is the key. Be not conformed to this world. Exactly. This world is carnal. Exactly. It's natural. Right? It, it exists on facts. It does. On sense experience. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? So you can prove yes. what is good yes. and acceptable and the perfect will of God. So you can be a revelation of God. See, this isn't so much about what we're saved from, it's what we're saved to. Yes, yes, yes. A life of Christ. The life of Christ lived in us. Life through His name. What is His name? The Word of God. Yes. All right. So now, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. I don't want anybody to leave here this morning feeling condemned or like somehow you're not saved or you're not going to heaven. Everything I'm telling you, it has nothing to do with what's going to happen to you after you decease physically. You're going to heaven. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. This is about what's going to happen between now and whenever that happens. Amen? He saved us to be something in this world, to have abundant life here, not just for what's coming in the distant future somewhere, or the older we are, the not so distant future, praise the Lord, if, if it's just a natural death, you know what I'm saying? But how we have heaven on earth, how we experience God on this plane, and reveal Him to others. There aren't any rallies or uh, you know, revival meetings in heaven. Everybody's already saved there. There's no prayer lines for healing. Right? right? That's, that's here. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So I said in my heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. I said in my heart concerning the estate or the condition of the sons of men, that God might manifest them and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. Mm -hmm. He's talking about unregenerated man. He's, he's asking that God will manifest them in a way that will reveal to them that they're animals. Right? What separates us from the animals? Spirit. They don't get born again. All right, verse 21. Who knows the spirit of man that goes upward and the spirit of the beast that goes downward to the earth? See, he says God will judge the wicked. But he's also bringing them a revelation that they can see themselves as beasts. Yes. Yes. Without... The regeneration of God, man is just a beast sure we are. with a beast nature. Sure. Romans chapter 7, verse 15. Hey, well, I'm born again. Yep. Your spirit is perfect. Yes, it is. But you got a mind that has not been renewed to the Word of God, it's still thinking beast thoughts. Sure right. And you know it does, or it wouldn't say the stuff it says, it wouldn't act the way it acts, it wouldn't think the thoughts it thinks. Yep, exactly. yep. Doesn't make you unsaved, it just means you are walking after the flesh. Yes. Yes. So for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Yep. Right. Oh, thank you, Paul. Yes. Because that's my life. All of us to some degree. Right. And we can pretend and put on the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, and look all perfect and righteous. But uh, that person that you're married to, just like the Holy Ghost. Yeah. It knows crap that nobody else knows. Thank God for a good wife who knows how to keep her mouth shut. Down. Praise <laughs> the Lord. And I suspect some husbands as well. 
I'm just saying. That's not to ridicule or to besmirch anybody or belittle them. That's a fact. And we all, if we're honest, we all know it. I'm not d demeaning you. I'm not trying to put you down or make you, you know, humiliate you or condemn you or anything else. I'm just saying, to the degree that our mind is not renewed, right. we will act carnal. Yes. Praise the Lord. For that which I do. That's Paul. And that is not before he got saved. Right. He's explaining something to this Roman church. He knows what they're going through. And he said, so at the end of all of that, he goes, I took this and that, and I can't, and I will, I want to, but I don't. The harder I want to do it, the more it seems like I don't do it. The more I focus on trying to be better, the more it seems like it blows up in my face and I end up being worse. But thank God for Jesus Christ. Now is what he's saying is all that stuff is about me focusing on me. And the more I focus on me, the more I screw it up. But if I would get my attention off of me and onto Jesus, there is therefore now no condemnation. This is chapter uh, 7. And there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh. Right. You're still not condemned by God, but your own mind condemns you. Exactly. Because it's still carnal. Exactly. It's still making it all about what you do or don't do. Right. All right? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm, I'm going to read this whole chapter. It's only 17 verses. Uh, Get it. Do it. 2 Thessalonians 2, beginning of verse 1. Yes. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning of verse 1. There are 17 verses. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together in unto Him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as to the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. He's saying, I don't care what anybody says or what your own intelligence tells you, don't be freaking out about the coming of Jesus because you are in Christ. You're good. It's, it's all right. You're not unsaved, you're just thinking wrong, right? So don't let anybody deceive you. So he says, uh, for that day shall not come until, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. The falling away, amen, is the revealing of that man of sin, that sin nature. Okay? Who opposes and exalts himself above all so that is God, or called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. We are the temple of God. Our carnal mind tries to establish itself as God in the temple. Like I've got the last word. Are you with me? This is not about somewhere in the Middle East. He's talking about in us, in you, in me. That carnal mind tries to elevate itself to be God. To have the last word. You're not going to get healed. Because you've seen the doctor's report. I don't care what Jesus said. You're not going to get your financial breakthrough. Even though Jesus became poor that you might become rich. It's not going to happen for you. That's putting that mind, that carnality, that flesh in control. It's making it God. In your temple. Praise the Lord. Remember you not that I was yet, I told you these things. Now you know what withholds that he might be revealed in this time. Now he says, now you know what's keeping him from having that position of God in your life. Of all those realities being true. What's, behold, what's, what's withholding it? Now you know. Uh -huh. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Right? Uh -huh. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Who's the one that's letting? You and me. Uh -huh. And we'll continue to let until we get him out of the way. Until we get our mind renewed to the word of God. Yes. I'm not... Look, I, 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 I'm for revival. I'm for all of this. I'm, I'm for anything that will help us. But the truth is, this is what's going to cause it to happen, not some meeting. 
Because we can, look, we've been having meetings for 2,000 years and we haven't figured any of this out yet. And we're still running around condemned and feeling guilty and, and, and you know, afraid to even be who we really are because we're afraid somebody's going to find out and ostracize us or, or think bad about us. Then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. What is the spirit of his mouth? The word of God. Uh -huh. He'll consume him with the word of God. With the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth which is the word of God that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now he's talking about unsaved people there. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Amen. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast. Hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ Himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and a good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Right here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. The beast is not some system, financial or otherwise. It's not the universal pricing code. Remember when that was going around here a few years back, when they, were, every, when they started putting the UPC on all the uh, cans and buy, everything you purchased, you know, and they'd scan it. Oh, here it comes. It's the mark of the beast. Yeah. It's going to be on your forehead. It's going to be in your right hand. No, the, the beast is not a system. It's carnal. Yeah. You are the beast. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Revelation 13 and 1. Wait, just back up a minute. Colossians 3, uh, verse 5 and 6. So the beast is not some system. We've seen it. He tells us that God would reveal to us that beast is human. It's human beings. It's our natural man that hasn't been regenerated, that hasn't been born again. And then the residue of that born-again experience is our mind that has to be renewed in order for us to function totally as Christ in the earth. Yes. So mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. All right? Verse 10. This is the nature of the beast. We just read it. But have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created it. Right. So the beast nature is given to us there at the beginning. And then it tells us, but we can, put, we can operate in that new man, which is renewed right. in the knowledge after the image of him that created us, right. which is God. All right. So that first thing is the nature of the beast. It's a fornicator. It's a idolater. It's all these things, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Revelation thirteen and one. I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. Now I'm not going to get into all of it, but if you go back and you read through Revelation, you'll find there are seventeen kings. Now, I'm not saying they aren't historic kings, but I'm also saying that is not the, the, the real purpose of what Jesus is revealing to us. Because this is a revelation of Jesus Christ. Not a revelation of weird stuff that's going to happen. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ. That's what it's about. He said, I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw this beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, ten, and crowns upon his head in the name of blasphemy. All right? The... C is always a type of people. You can find it all through. There's even places where it's sp spoken of specifically right. as, a, as people. So the C represents people. Okay. 
And so does the sand. Yeah. Rise up out of the sea, having seven heads, ten horns, so on and so forth, upon the sand of the sea. That's symbolic of people, all right? Look at James chapter 1 and verse 6. I touched on this here a few weeks back, not in the same context, but just because Adam is earthly. Mm -hmm. He's an earth person, the seas and the earth. So he tells us, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Double-minded man gets nothing. Double-minded man is somebody who's spirit, but his mind's not renewed, so he's double-minded. Sometimes he believes it, sometimes he doesn't believe it. It depends on whatever he's going through, and to the degree that he's going through it will determine whether he believes it or not. If it's really tough, he won't believe it. If it's going pretty good, he can probably have faith for it. But he's double-minded because he's wavering. His waver is like a wave of the sea driven, amen, by the wind and tossed. So he's fleshly of the sea, right? Out of that sea came this beast. All right? Revelation 12 and verse 12. So they come up, this beast comes up out of the sand of the sea. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So, man is of the dust created, right? That's how he was formed. Right. His spirit was created in the image of God, but he was formed in the dust. Yeah. Right? So, the dust of man, the dust represents carnality. Uh -huh. Represents the flesh. The separation between spirit and man. Right. All right? Dust is carnal. All right. Genesis 22, verse 17, and this is a good example of that. Genesis 22, and verse 17, God's telling Abraham he's going to bless him. And he tells him that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. Now what did Abraham have? He had Isaac who was earthly. He was not a promise. He wasn't, he wasn't from God. He wasn't the spiritual child. He was the carnal child. Came through the flesh. Through his Abraham's own effort with a concubine or with a slave woman. Amen. Isaac, on the other hand, is from above. Right. right? He was born from God. God gave him a promise and it was God that made it happen. That's why we have to be born again, born, of above, born from above, born of God. Because we came into this thing a beast. They even talks about uh, Ishmael being like a wild ass. Yeah. A beast. So, two natures, heaven and earth, Christ's nature and the beast's nature. And the devil comes to devour the carnally minded, the double minded, the sea dweller, the sand dweller, from which the beast arises. Praise the Lord. He comes after your carnal mind. That's his, that's his avenue. That's his, that's his way to get to you, the dust, to the earth, through the earth. Not through the heavenly. He can't touch your spirit. That's why the, if we renew our mind to the spirit of God, we can resist the devil and he'll leave us alone. He'll flee. Because exactly. he's only got one avenue of approach and that's your natural mind. Right. Your unrenewed mind. Praise the Lord. All right, Galatians 5, verse 15 and 16. Let me just... just I'm not going to say. But just think. If we bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's every one of us. God wants to renew the nature of people who act like animals. I'm right. So bless God, I'm going to stay right, and you're going to have to deal with it. Right. It's not about being right or wrong. It's about being spiritual or carnal. Yes. Right. Yes. The beast's authority is the carnal mind. It is. It is. Mm. 
All right. Ephesians 1, 13, 14. I'll, t- I'll, I'll, I'll just, you don't have to go there, Roberto, just for the sake of time. But he tells us that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. Okay? Mm-hmm. So we're locked in. We're born again. So we have a seal. We are, we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13, you don't have to go there either for the sake of time. It tells us that we have the mind of Christ. Yes. That's our seal. Yes. Yeah. Amen? Because if you don't have that one, you got the mark of the beast. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Yeah. Take, forget about all that other junk. Right. Yeah. Just either you're operating under one authority or another. Praise the Lord. This isn't something we should be freaking out about. It's something we just need to get a, our mind around it so that we can do what it is we're supposed to be doing. Exactly. I mean, we're looking, oh, the Antichrist is Hitler. The Antichrist is Stalin. The Antichrist is Reagan. You know, the Antichrist is, you know, just pick somebody you don't like that's acting crazy, and that's the Antichrist. Well, no, he may be, he may be exhibiting some antichrist behavior right right? because he's carnal because they're not operating all the time in the spirit but that don't make him the antichrist the antichrist is a spirit and he is operating in all of us at times when we're not when Christ is not enthroned when Christ is not totally in control then whatever's keeping that is the antichrist or the unchrist All right, Revelation 19, 11 through 21. See, God doesn't, He doesn't want to scare us. He wants us to have, He wants us to understand what's going on so we so we can experience all of Him. And the way that happens is by renewing our mind to the Word of God. Not to fables, not to traditions, not to just because somebody else said it or this person or that person or you know what I'm saying? I look, I'm not, I'm not against. The gifts of the Spirit. I believe in them. I do. And I try to operate in them. But here's the deal. You all have the gifts of the Spirit. If you have the Spirit, you have all the gifts. And the thing that's withholding Jesus is we're depending on one or two people to display those gifts instead of the body rising up and being the revelation. Yes. Yes. Paul said, I would that you all prophesy. Yes. Amen. These signs follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick. They shall. Everybody shall. Everybody that's a believer will lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Everybody that's a believer will cast out devils. Yes. Everybody that's a believer will speak in new tongues. Prophesy. All those things. Everybody. But as long as we limit it to a handful of people, God is not being revealed. Amen. In us. He is not come. He either came or he's coming, but he isn't come. Exactly. Praise God. And I get frustrated with it because I'm not, look, I'm not jealous. I could care less. I just, I'm jealous for the body of Christ to experience who we are in Christ and that's what I'm, that's what I, bothers me. I could, t- I could tell you the stories. I went to see Rodney Howard Brown. I went to these meetings. I went all over the place. I had people laying hands on me and imparting and doing all these things. Amen. Uh, Bill Johnson and what was his name? Randy, Randy Clark. I mean, I've been there and had it. And the Lord told me in Minneapolis, Minnesota, when I was there in a meeting with Rodney Howard Brown, He told me, what has he got that you don't have? Exactly. And I thought, well, a big church... But God was speaking of spiritual things. And what he was telling me was, he has nothing you don't already have. What are you expecting him to give you that you haven't already gotten from Christ? If you have the anointed one, you have the anointing. The problem was we just aren't aware of it. Everything's under his feet, but we're not seeing it under his feet. And so we run for another testimony from somebody else to anoint me and pray over me and impart to me. Well, I'm down that road, but I'm just saying, go where you want to go. Be where you want to be. Do what you want to do. But I'm just telling you, it's a never-ending treadmill. Yes, it is. And you'll always come back to you. Uh-huh. And if it's not you in Christ, yeah. you're screwed. Yeah, it's truth. you got to die right. to get the benefit. We do. 
And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Praise the Lord. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of his mouth goes a sharp two-edged sword, the Word of God. That with it he would smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come, gather yourselves together into a supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh, and I notice the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army and beast was taken with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him in which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse the word of God which the sword proceedeth out of his mouth and all the fowls were filled with, his fle with the flesh. Praise the Lord. The word of God not literal armies. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Yes. Praise the Lord. We're not talking about some great horrendous battle here. It's a great horrendous battle, but it's not natural. Uh -huh. This is a revelation of Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's about how Jesus defeats the enemy. How Jesus destroys the kings. Yes. The carnal kings that rule in our lives. He does it with the Word of God. Amen. The sword that comes out of His mouth, the two-edged sword. Yes. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Renew your mind. Be not conformed to this world. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In Revelation again, 19, verses 19 through 21. Just read it, but just... Putting this in context. Don't be conformed to this world. Get your mind renewed. I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse against the army. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and then that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of burning, uh, fire burning with brimstone and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse which sword proceeded out of his mouth and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. All right, Jesus, the Word of God, makes war against all the kings that have dominated our lives. Right. Yeah. Things that have been kings, things that have been rulers in our life. Mm -hmm. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 25 and 26. 2 Timothy 2, 25 and 26. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves... That's us. Uh -huh. Instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. To change their mind so they can see the truth. Uh -huh. In other words, renew their minds. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who taketh captive him by him at his will. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I could back up, but that's the job of a preacher. Right. That's what a teacher is supposed to do. He's supposed to instruct those that are opposing themselves. Including him. Including himself. Amen. If God adventure, for adventure would give them the ability to change their mind. To, to acknowledge the truth. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. They, cover the, they recover themselves by the word of God. He makes war against the beast with his sword. The truth, God's Word. How do we make war with the beast nature? We war through the one named the Word of God. 
That's what makes war against the beast, and that's what overcomes him. Yes. That's what overcomes the flesh. That's what overcomes the carnal mind. Uh-huh. Sword of the Spirit, the Amen. Word of God. Amen. Galatians 5.19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. I could go on. There's another section in uh, Hebrews, I think, and I may read it. I'm not sure. Uh, it, it lists uh, 17 of those. That's the 17 kings in the book of Revelation. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Okay, these are the kings. Fornication is simply operating outside of covenant. If you're married, you have a covenant relationship. If you're having a relationship outside of that marriage, besides that marriage, you're a fornicator. Uh It's operating outside of covenant, outside the relationship with God. We are espoused to one husband, Jesus Christ. Operating outside of Jesus is committing fornication. Uh-huh. See what I'm saying? Yes. Now, you're, I, I'm not saying you're going to hell because this happens, right? But my people perish for lack of knowledge. Yeah. You're saved. You're going to heaven, but you're going to live a life that is all fouled up here on earth. And it, you can choose to do that. And God loves you. He, he's not going to change His love for you. But you'd never get to experience right. the fullness right. of that relationship with Him. Yes. Hebrews 12, verse 16. Hebrews 12 and 16. I'm a hurry here. Lest there be, and here's, here's the example, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. He broke the covenant. The covenant should have been his. He was the eldest son. But because he, there was something carnal that was more important to him. They call it fornication. It wasn't a sexual act. It was a breaking of covenant. Anything that causes you to sell your birthright, Mm -hmm. you are a child of God. Anything that causes you to give up God's best for your life Mm -hmm. is a spirit of fornication. And it will rob you, and it will bring you into what Revelation calls tribulation. A big mess. Not keeping you from heaven. But it's going to make like hell on earth. At times. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 12 and 13. 1 Corinthians 2, 12 and 13. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, intellect, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're looking from a spiritual perspective, not a natural one. And when you do that, it kind of flips things around. I mean, it changes. Because we, 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 we've tried to think, if I just am smarter, then I must be more spiritual. No, you can have all kinds of information and have absolutely zero revelation. Sure. Just go to any seminar. Go, go to uh, you know, any college where they have a seminary or where they have a, a, a uh, Bible teacher, a uh, theology professor. Uh-huh. He, he'll have all the information in the history, but 99% of the time they have no relationship with God whatsoever. They're not born again. They just got a bunch of information. Uh-huh. So, be not conformed, but be transformed. To overcome the beast, the sword has to do war in your life. And that sword is going to make war with everything that makes up the beast nature. 
2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. We're about done here. Hang with me here. Just a few minutes after 12. 2 Corinthians 3, 18. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So the mirror, we know, is the Word of God. And when we look into the mirror of the Word of God, we are changed into that image. Yes. Yes. And we're still talking about making war with the beast. The word is how we do it. Yes. All right, look at Revelation 15 and verse 2. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. And then that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image. And over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. So it's, it's just exactly what Second Corinthians is telling us. It's repeating it just in a different way, in a more uh, poetic way, if you will, in the book of Revelation. But it's saying the same thing. We as believers have been baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. Another thing you could look at is when, when Moses made the laver, where they where people were, you know, where they were cleansed, where the sacrifices and so on were cleansed. That laver was made up of the looking glasses of all the women. Some were brass, whatever they had, that's what they made that brazen laver, the baptismal, out of. So that, he's just, just repeating things that have all through the Bible, he's just saying it in a different way. And we've turned it into all kinds of weird stuff, but the truth is, I saw it as, a, as if it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and then they had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. Okay, as believers, we've been baptized into Christ with the Holy Ghost. He said, I'm baptizing you with water, uh, John said, but he shall come, and he that will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. The fire of God that comes into our lives by the Word of God. It's the Spirit of Christ is the Holy Ghost. Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's not crowded in there. It's that Spirit. The fire of God that comes into our lives is to destroy the beast and his nature. It comes from the Word of God. Christ in you. The Word of God in you. Romans 6, 1 through 5. Romans 6, 1 through 5. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know you not that so many of us as we're baptized into Jesus Christ, we're baptized into His death. Therefore, we are buried with Him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of His death, we shall also in the likeness of His resurrection. Anybody knows anything about baptism? That's all it is. It's a symbol, symbolic of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. You repent, that's dying. Then you're buried in the water, and you're raised in newness of life. Yes. Praise the Lord. And the scripture even tells us baptism, that doesn't save anybody. No. That is a type. It's a, it's a symbol of what has actually happened to you spiritually. Uh -huh. This is a physical thing that you do to show that you have made a spiritual decision. That something spiritual has happened that can't be seen. Mm -hmm. So we give you something that can be seen so that people can relate to it and understand. Right. Praise God. We have to realize the old man is dead. And just to continue the paradox, recognize the old man is dead and live in it. Yeah. Praise yeah. the Lord. Live in that death. Yeah. Dead with Christ. Alive in Christ. Yeah. Paul said, I was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet it's not me that lives, but Christ in me. The life that I live, I now live in Jesus Christ. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, for whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. 
It's the Word of God. The sword that destroys the man of sin. The spirit of his mouth, the brightness of his coving, drives out the darkness. We were translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom yes. of his dear son. Mm -hmm. The light. I am the light of the world. <clears throat> he that walks in me knows no darkness. Exactly. Praise the Lord. The brightness of his coming drives out the darkness. The lamb that's in the midst of you will make war with the beast and will overcome it yes, yes, yes. when you renew your mind. We overcome by the word of our testimony, by the word of God, and the blood of the lamb. Yes. Last scripture, Hebrews 4, 11 through 16. Hebrews 4, 11 through 16, and we're done. Hebrews 4, 11 through 16. Praise God. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. The word of God manifests the beast. It will manifest whatever we are, wherever we're at. Amen? But all things are naked and open under the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, the Word of God. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the next time, you know, you're, you're having an argument or you're finding fault and you're, and you're right. Let me just be real crude and bold. Just shut the hell up. Because that's what you're doing. You're speaking hell. You're speaking death. You're speaking the beast into situations that you are supposed to be a revelation of Jesus Christ. And until we do it, until, I'm not, look, again, you're not going to hell for doing it. But you'll never see heaven, the totality of what God wants your life to be here on earth. You'll never experience it. This is, the, this is what we do. It's the only thing He asks us to do. Renew your mind to His Word and come boldly to His throne of grace. So when we screw it up, we still have access. We still can come boldly to God and know that we're going to have the grace of God to forgive us for the failure so that we can get up off our rear end and get back to the Word of God and renew our mind, amen, so that we'll have the victory next time. Yes. Yes. This is the thing we're talking about, fear and, and courage. Yep. Yep. Great, great. Come boldly yes. to the throne. Yeah, exactly. Esther, she came without the law. She, she came believing in the mercy and the goodness of that king. Yes, and that's, that's the metaphor for us coming to God. Come believing that He loves you, that He cares for you, no matter how many times you failed, no matter how many times you screwed it up. Look, so is everybody else. Right. No matter how pre prim and proper they try to act. Exactly. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's not to tell us, just give up and just do it. I'm just saying, look, nobody can, can ridicule you because God doesn't have big sins and little sins. They're big ones to us. They're not big to Him. Exactly. He took care of all of them. Every single one. So you're one of pride or you're one of, of uh, self-righteousness or whatever it might be. No worse than the drug addict. Yeah. No worse than the homosexual. Yeah. That's right. Amen? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. He said the sin is this. Fornication. Yeah. Trying to operate outside of our covenant with Him. Yeah trying to raise our carnality up and set it in the temple as though it were God. Uh -huh. Humble yourself. Yes. Amen. And the Almighty shows up. Yes. Praise God. There's no shame in being human. He created us right, as right. humans. The shame is to be so naive as to not take advantage of what the Spirit has for us as humans. 
not shame on you, but shame for you. Yeah. That you're not getting the full benefit. Right. Okay? So it's not, you're not going to go home because I've waved a hand over you or prayed a prayer of faith over you. You're going to have to go home and when the next time the enemy comes and starts telling you what a jerk you are and what a failure you are and how you're going to die young and you're going to be broke and all these other things, you need to go to the Word of God and tell Him the truth. God's back on the throne. And whatever God says, whatever the King says, is law. Amen? That's a law. It's gravity. It works every time. We operate by the law of faith. And faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And it will work just like that every single time that we work it. It's a law. It's an unchanging law. This is a law in the earth. Get far enough out into space, it won't work anymore. But the law of God is without repentance. It never changes. Here, there, anywhere. Eternity, we're going to live by faith. Just we'll get started now. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God.